Hey guys, my name is and this is Cobra. Welcome to the series where I teach you how to code in Python. Today, we are talking about importing libraries. We're coming to the end of the basic segment now. There's only a few more things left, uh, both of which in, um, talking about libraries and modules and stuff like that. So this is just going to be general information videos about how this sort of stuff works. Um, because Python, if there's one thing Python is very good at, it's very good at being incredibly versatile and uh, built-in libraries and especially third-party libraries um, make that happen. So uh, they are a very important skill to know. So the word you're going to be using the most when doing this sort of thing is import. Uh, so C, I think Rust has use and C, uh, or C Sharp has using, I think. I actually don't remember what Rust uh, uses, but different languages use all sorts of different things. There's one that uses include. I think that might be C++. I may be getting all my languages confused, but Python uses import. That's the bit you need to know. Uh, so we're just going to import math for now. And if we do, say, for example, math.square root uh, 9, uh, we need to print it out. I'm still forgetting to do that. <laughs> it's been a whole video and I'm still forgetting. There we go, so it returns 3. So we have called the square root method from the math library. We don't have a square root uh, built in, so we need to import it. We import math and we get um, that. We can also say import random and then we can do uh, print random dot rand int uh, one and 50 and this will uh, print a random number between one and 50 and it'll be random every single time. Oh, we got a one. Oh, we got a 50 as well. And we, got, <laughs> we got both um, the lower and upper bound. That's kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, this is the, the basic syntax of how to do it. Uh, you can do import math random like that. However, um, uh, that's actually discouraged in Pep8, the styling guide. I haven't talked much about Pep8. I will do a separate series on that. But this um, this syntax of doing it isn't um, actually recommended. You could It's actually recommended you do that. If you want to import... Um, certain things from a library you can so you can do uh from uh time import time for example and then a uh, print time and this will give you the uh the current timestamp as you can see um we can also import a gm time like this and then do gm time and oh there we go that's actually a, a bit more detailed we, uh, we've with what that is. Uh, when you're doing from imports, you can use the comma syntax. Pep8 doesn't have a problem with that. Um, and they should always be below other imports like that. Because um, that is more or less, actually there are, there is one more thing you can use. Um, so this is more used for stuff like NumPy and Pandas have like almost like styles where you import them as something, but you can use the as uh, method. You can import math as M, is that M? Okay, my cursor was in the way, so I couldn't see. And if we try and run this now, we'll get an error saying that uh, math doesn't exist. Uh, but if you define this as M, it then works as intended because we imported it as M. So it's the same sort of syntax as the context manager, really. So we can either use the default name or we can import it as like anything. Um, so very loud. I don't know why I've done that. Those are just the first two words that came to my head. Um, I just wanted something completely unrelated to show that it does still work. However, doing something like this, importing math is very loud, um, is probably not ideal. It's not recommended. It should be uh, something useful. So import numpy um, as np, for example. I don't have numpy installed at the moment. Um, but having this is is fine because np is, is clearly related to numpy. This is actually kind of the recommended way of importing numpy. Uh, all the examples you see have this, but... Um, you don't need to worry about NumPy at the moment. Uh, God, if we can, there we go. Um, I used to do from import random as R a lot. I don't do it anymore. Um, oops. But that's potentially something you can get away with. I've still got a very loud thing here. But that's potentially something you can get away with um, with doing. So that's all there really is to know about... Um, the, the sort of importing syntax. I was going to do installing modules in a separate video, however, I feel that's a little bit silly uh, to do. The video is really short and um, it just doesn't seem necessary. So I'm going to do it in the actual same video. So I'm going to launch my terminal and I've customized it a bit. As you can see, I've got a, uh, a bit of a power line thing going, although it, it's not particularly uh, happy with me there. Um, 
So in the same way that we can like launch Pi like this, we can actually just install uh, modules, um, typically using pip. Uh, so pip is the installation uh, program that comes with Python. If you do pip-v, we'll see that we are currently running um, 20.1.1 and the default is actually mapped to Python 3.7 because that's the most recent version I have installed. But you may need to do something like pi-3.9-mpip to actually get the current pip and if we run that now. We'll see that we are using 23.3 from Python 3.9. And then we have our install uh, command. So we can install uh, anything we want here. So I'm going to install, uh, actually I'm not going to install NumPy because that doesn't work on 3.9. Um, ggme, I'm going to install this called the Pi script. I may already have it. Uh, no, I don't already have it. So as you can see, um, it downloads Discord.py and it also installs all its dependencies as well. So there's a list of dependencies, uh, a list of dependencies that Discord.py needs. So for example, AO, HTTP, uh, multi-dit YAL. Um, if these things are already installed on your computer, it won't actually install them again. Um, but uh, yeah, and that's basically just pip. And then once you have that, you can actually look at the libraries you have installed using uh, list. And this will give you just a huge list of all the ones you have installed and all the different uh, versions. So where is Discord.py? Uh, it's down here somewhere. Uh, there we go. So we installed Discord.py 1.6.0. So if we, if we decide we don't want uh, Discord.py anymore, then we can do um, uninstall uh, Discord.py. Now normally it will ask you if you want to do it. Press Y or N. Have you, if you don't want to do that, so if we uh, say we decide we don't want AO, HTTP and we don't want Seaborn anymore and we don't want I know YAL anymore for whatever reason uh, and then we pass the dash Y uh, this will basically say yes we definitely want to do this um, and also we can install and uninstall multiple libraries at the same time we don't have to do it one at a time if you do that it will just uninstall them all um, and then uh, yeah once we have our library in there um, so what have we actually got um, we have, I think I've uninstalled all the ones where it's actually easy to demonstrate. That's kind of annoying. Yeah, we literally did just install all the ones where it's easy to, uh, whatever, we'll just install Discord.py again and I'll just, because it's just easy to, to work out. Uh, so that's installed now. Uh, so we can go back to Sublime and, oops, and we can, uh, import, uh, Discord here. And then uh, if we get rid of all this for a second, uh, we can just print a discord.embed. It should just print like an empty embed object. There we go. That took a little while, uh, but as you can see, it's just printing an object. There's nothing like here at the moment. Um, but we've uh, we've taken the Discord library, we've created an, an embed object using it, and we've actually just output it to the terminal. Obviously, uh, this isn't how you print embeds, but this just shows that it actually is able to access these things. Um, so yeah, while this wasn't going to be the final video of the basic series, I of course decided that it should be because it, I decided to be silly to, to, for it to not be. Um, so due to that decision, we are now at the end of the basic segment. Uh, there is going to be an intermediate and advanced segment as well, but uh, I'm going to be doing some other stuff in the meantime. I'm not going to be continuing with this for now. Um, if you do have any requests for the intermediate or advanced segment, do let me know um, because I would like to keep those ones updated because there is a lot more intermediate stuff than there is uh, basic stuff. There's also a lot more intermediate stuff than there is advanced stuff. Python is not a particularly difficult language, but it is. it can be very difficult to write something really good in it. Um, I, I mean, I've always said to people that Python is a very, is it, it's a very easy language to make something work in, but it's a very difficult language to make something work well in um, to a certain extent. Uh, but if you know all like the advanced and intermediate techniques, then you can make some really, really good stuff in it, which is why I want to continue the how to Python series in its individual segments. But if you like the series and do let me know, uh, subscribing to the channel will uh, help me uh, know that also liking the videos and stuff. And if you really liked it, then uh, supporting on Patreon is a really good way to show your support. Um, of course you don't have to, but it'd be a really cool thing of you to do. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in the series, then don't be afraid to leave them in the comments, or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description, and my socials are down there should you wish to view them. But with that, um, 
I'm going to end the video and the and this uh, little bit of the series here. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time for whatever I do. I don't know what it will be. Um but yeah, I'll see you, I'll see if whatever that is.